Chapter 2 Using Advanced Boot Options Armin Shariarian Chapter 2 Using Advanced Boot Options The Advanced Boot Options menu gives you, the system administrator, a number of utilities to troubleshoot various system issues. Advanced Boot Options is a menu that has been around in Windows operating systems for a very long time. There are two ways to get to it. The first option is the nightmare of every system administrator, in which the system has an issue, reboots, and then enters into the Advanced Boot Options menu, indicating that there was a problem. The second and less scary option is when a system administrator chooses to boot into Advanced Boot Options menu. This may be done for a number of reasons. I've done it to troubleshoot issues with drivers and to investigate and remove malware from a potentially infected machine. To enter into the Advanced Boot Options menu, follow these steps. 1. Click the Start menu and then click the Settings icon. 2. Click Update and Security and then click Recovery. 3. Under Advanced Startup, click the Restart Now button shown in figure 2 to 3. 4. Click the continue button. 5. Click the troubleshoot button. 6. Choose startup settings. 7. Click restart. When the advanced boot options menu is up, you're presented with a number of options, shown in figure 2 to 4. I describe these options in the following sections. Safe mode. Safe mode is almost always my go-to when there are boot issues with a system. Whenever new hardware or software has been installed, or if I suspect that a system may be having issues because of a malware infection, I turn to safe mode. Figure 2 to 3. Your journey into the advanced boot options menu starts with the restart now button. Figure 2 to 4. In the Advanced Boot Options menu, you can choose what you want Windows Server to do. You may be asking, what is Safe Mode, and why is it such a big deal? Safe Mode starts Windows with the bare minimum services and drivers it needs in order to run. Safe Mode is crucial for troubleshooting issues where a bad driver is causing a boot loop. By going into Safe Mode, you can troubleshoot what's wrong with the driver and uninstall or replace it. Safe mode is also extremely useful with potential malware infections because the malware may have dependencies it needs to run that are not loaded, which allows you to run malware removal tools and destroy the last bits and pieces of the malicious code from the operating system. The type of safe mode I use depends on what I need to accomplish. For instance, if I'm just troubleshooting an issue that I suspect may be related to drivers, most of the time I use regular old safe mode. In the following sections, I walk you through the different forms of safe mode and why you may want to use each of them. Safe mode. This is just regular old safe mode. It loads only the basic services and drivers needed for Windows to function and for you to interact with it. Nothing more, nothing less. In most cases, this regular form of safe mode is all you need to troubleshoot and resolve the issue at hand. It has a graphical interface like you are used to seeing in Windows Server, but it has no access to the Internet or other network resources. In essence, it's a standalone machine. Safe mode with networking. Safe mode with networking is similar to regular safe mode, except the system will also load the drivers needed for the network interface card, NIC, to function properly. This is useful if you need to download software from the internet, for example, drivers or diagnostic software or over a network share. Safe mode with networking is most useful when you're trying to resolve a software or driver issue. It allows you to download replacement software or replacement drivers while still in safe mode.
then you can replace the misbehaving driver or incompatible software with a known good version and then boot successfully. Safe mode with command prompt. In safe mode with command prompt, you bypass the Explorer desktop environment. This can be especially useful if the desktop is not displaying properly for whatever reason. If you like server core, you'll like this version of safe mode. If you aren't as comfortable with the command window as you would like to be, having a cheat sheet available may help you. I recommend safe mode with command prompt when the issue that needs to be fixed has something to do with graphics. The problem may be due to a driver, graphics rendering, or removing a malware infection that relied on graphical components like wallpapers and screensavers. Enable boot logging. If you need to see which drivers were installed as the system started up, you should choose Enable boot logging. This will create a file called entlog text, which lists all the drivers that were installed when the operating system started. The file is stored in your Windows system directory, typically, this will be c colon backslash windows. Incidentally, this is the same list you see flash by on the screen when you boot into safe mode. Enable low resolution video. This setting is very useful if you're having display issues, most commonly after changing display settings to something your monitor doesn't support. It uses the currently installed video driver but starts with lower resolution, typically 640x480, and refresh settings. Last known good configuration. Last known good configuration is helpful in fixing issues with booting that occur because the Windows registry has been damaged. Most commonly, this occurs due to user misconfiguration or from updates or patches. When you choose last known good configuration, the registry is reverted so that it matches the settings it had the last time the system booted successfully. Anytime you use something that modifies the registry in any way, be extra cautious. There's no way to undo using last known good configuration. If it doesn't fix the issue, or it makes matters worse, you'll need to restore from a backup. Directory Services Restore Mode This option only appears on a server that is a domain controller, and, therefore, it isn't shown in Figure 2 to 4. Directory Services Restore Mode, DSRM, is a SPE chail form of safe mode made for domain controllers that allows you to repair or recover an active directory database. To use this utility you need to know the DSRM password that was set when the domain controller was initially created. If you don't know the password, you can use the Entsutil tool to change the password. You need to have access to the COMMAND prompt on the system in question to run it. If all of this is Greek to you, don't worry. I cover Active Directory in depth in Book 2, Chapter 5. For now, think of Active Directory like a special database that stores information on users, computers, sites, and other objects in your network. This database can be crucial to your organization, so knowing how to restore it if it becomes damaged is a very useful skill. Debugging Mode If you're a hardcore system administrator and you want to get your feet wet using a kernel debugger, this option is for you. The kernel is a program that is one of the first to run when your server boots, the kernel loads right after the bootloader. It has total control over everything on your system. Debugging mode turns on kernel debugging, which allows you to work with the kernel debugger to examine states and processes that are running at the kernel level. This can be very useful for troubleshooting issues with device drivers that cause the infamous blue screen of death and issues with the central processing. Unit, CPU. 
you can look at the kernel memory dump on the system that is having the issue, or you can view the kernel memory dump remotely on another SYS TEM via a serial connection. The information from the debugging mode is typically made available over the COM1 port, assuming you have a serial port and it's assigned to COM1. On newer systems that don't have a serial port, you can also access this information over USB. Kernel debugging is not for the faint of heart. For more information on how to set up your system for kernel debugging with either serial or USB connectivity, check out the following articles. Serial Connection https colon slash slash learn dot microsoft dot com slash and hyphen us slash windows hyphen hardware slash drivers slash debugger slash setting hyphen up hyphen a hyphen null hyphen modem hyphen cable hyphen connection usb connection https colon slash slash learn dot microsoft dot com slash and hyphen us slash windows hyphen hardware slash drivers slash debugger slash setting hyphen up hyphen a hyphen usb hyphen three hyphen zero hyphen debug hyphen cable hyphen connection com ports were typically presented as serial ports with rs232 connectors on older systems on newer systems these have been replaced with USB ports. USB stands for Universal Serial Bus it's still a serial connection. Disable automatic restart on system failure. Eventually, every system administrator has a system that will continuously try to start, fail, reboot, and then try to start, fail, reboot, and so on. This situation is known as a boot loop. If you're experiencing a boot loop on one of your systems, you can get the system to stop automatically restarting by choosing Disable Automatic Restart on System Failure from the Advanced Boot Options menu. Disabling Automatic Restart can be very helpful if the system is getting the blue screen of death and you need to get the information being displayed. When the system halts on its next blue screen, you'll have all the time you need to copy down the information. Disable Driver Signature Enforcement By choosing the Disable Driver Signature Enforcement option, you're basically telling the system that it's okay to load drivers that aren't digitally signed. Microsoft requires drivers to be digitally signed by default, and it will prevent unsigned drivers from running. Microsoft does this because, when a driver is digitally signed, it's seen as being authentic because you can verify from the digital signature that it came from the vendor it claims to be from. Digital signatures also guarantee that the driver hasn't been altered in any way since it was released by the vendor. Digital signatures use a code signing certificate to encrypt the hash of a file. Hashes are unique thumbprints any change to the file will change the hash. That encrypted hash is then bundled with the certificate and the executable for the driver. When the end user installs the driver, the hash of the file is decrypted with the public key in the certificate. The file gets hashed again on the end user's system, and the new hash is compared to the decrypted hash. If they match, the driver hasn't been tampered with. If you choose to disable driver signature enforcement, you'll be able to load unsigned drivers. Choose this option at your own risk, you could end up installing malware that presents itself as an unsigned driver. Disable early launch anti-malware driver. Malware that installs after Windows has booted will most likely be seen by the antivirus software that is installed on the system. But the problem is, virus writers began writing malware called rootkits. These rootkits can be very difficult to get rid of because they install and execute before the operating system has booted. Many of the more sophisticated rootkits began installing drivers that start really early in the boot process of the system. 
This can make them extremely difficult to find and remove. Microsoft does its best to evolve and respond to threats and prevent them whenever possible. In this case, it came up with the early launch anti-malware, Elam, driver. Certified antivirus vendors whose products support early launch can get their products drivers to launch before the Windows boot drivers, which allows them to scan for malicious processes on boot. Pretty cool, right? But what happens if a legitimate boot driver for Windows gets flagged as Molly Sias? Your server won't boot. So, Microsoft gives you the ability to turn off this feature, by choosing Disable Early Launch Anti-Malware Driver, to allow the boot driver to launch like normal. This feature is a great one to have on. Only disable it if you absolutely have to and then only until the issue is resolved. Performing a memory test. What happens if your server is crashing unexpectedly or throwing blue screens when you least expect it? That can be a difficult question to answer. These SYMP TOMs could occur because of corrupted software or because of hardware failure. Memory is a great place to start with your troubleshooting efforts and Windows Server 2022 includes a built-in memory diagnostic utility called the Windows Memory Diagnostics Tool. You can run the Windows Memory Diagnostics Tool by pressing the Windows key plus R, typing mdsched.exe, and clicking OK. If you do nothing, the Windows Memory Diagnostics Tool will run in standard mode. You can interrupt it at any time by pressing F1 to enter the options screen and change the settings. Your options are as follows, see figure 2 to 5. Test mix, the test mix is the set of tests you want the tool to run. Basic, runs three tests on your memory and is the fastest option. Standard, runs the same tests on your memory as basic and adds five additional tests. It takes longer to complete than basic. Extended, runs the same tests as standard and adds nine additional tests. This test is the most detailed and takes the longest to complete. If you don't know what each of these tests is looking for, standard is a good starting point for your tests. Extended takes longer so if you don't need the extra tests, you may not get any worthwhile information from running them. That said, it won't hurt your server to run any of the three tests. Cache, cache sets the cache setting, cache is used to improve the speed of memory access for things that are frequently accessed by the CPU, for each test you're going to run. The cache should be disabled if you're running tests that require direct access to the memory. Your options are as follows. Default, in most cases, default is the appropriate setting. It selects the correct cache setting for the test that's being run. On, forces the cache on for the tests. Off, forces the cache off for the tests. Pass count. 0 to 15 pass count controls how many times the whole test mix you selected will run. If it's set to 5, the selected test mix will run through its tests 5 times. The default for this setting is to make 2 passes. After you've made your selections, press F10 to apply the settings, and the scan will restart. Figure 2 to 5.